Hi everybody, welcome back to IndyCar. A bit later than planned this Sunday. Uh, for those of you who tuned in this morning to see IndyCar and were uh, a bit uh, put out to see it cut off short after about half a minute, I do apologise. It was a slightly experimental location I was using for the broadcast and it wasn't a very good signal I'm afraid. So here we are again, back in Glasgow uh, with today's news. Now, uh, at the top of the show I mentioned the fact that uh, in the blurb that ballots, particularly referendums on independence, are not always easy or civil uh, things to organise. And in the case of the recent Catalan uh, referendum on independence last year, was it last year, year before? But anyway, last year I believe, um, there was tremendous problems for the Catalan government in trying to just simply get ballot papers uh, printed. In the first instance, the Spanish government had seized the assets of the Catalan government. It would not allow them to use public money or taxation uh, to buy uh, or to, to get printed any kind of ballot papers or ballot boxes. And so in order to organise uh, an independence referendum, the Catalan government and its supporters had to go to great lengths uh, to secretly organise the printing uh, and transportation of ballot papers. And this was done actually using um, several 70-year-old or, or over um, ex-Catalan uh, resistance members from the Franco era when they were resisting Franco's rule. Uh, and these resistance fighters now in their 70s swung into action in France to have the ballot papers secretly printed and transported in a truck over the border just before uh, the referendum was due to be held. Even the ballot boxes themselves uh, couldn't be put in place. Uh, they had to be kept secret. And they were actually ordered from China and then hidden in various parts of the countryside all over Catalonia and hundreds of different locations ready to be used uh, at the drop of a hat when people find out where the polling stations were to be. As we all know, on polling day, uh, the ballot papers uh, made it in time for the referendum. But unfortunately, the Spanish riot police were used to brutalise, beat up and otherwise um, try to prevent people from voting, which is their civil right as human beings. Uh, and f it was appalling to see violence used by the state against its own people to prevent them from having a legal referendum, a ballot on their own future. Interestingly, some uh, of the ballot papers were seized by the Spanish government who had locked down all of the ports. And at one point, the um, even the ballot boxes and ballot papers had to be moved, some of them by sea, through the southern ports of, uh, of France. But in the end, up, they had enough ballot papers, despite the fact that the ones which were seized meant they didn't have enough there was a French printing company which was prepared to work through the night uh, for no pay at all to print off the required number in time for the ballot the next day. These are heroic efforts and something which might surprise people in the 21st century that anybody would need to go to those enormous lengths just to have a civil right which we all take for granted here in Scotland and which we hope we will be able to use in the next 12 months to determine our own future as an independent country. But it's worth remembering that the tactics used by the Spanish government against the Catalans are not out with the wit of the Tories to copy. In fact, we know that the, uh, the Tories are preparing a plan B uh, for, when, uh, for when Brexit occurs and when they're given a chance to declare any kind of emergency and suspend the normal rule of law, they will move in straight away in the same way that, um, that Rajoy's thugs did during the Catalan referendum. Maybe not to stop us voting by force, but to lock down the country and suspend its normal, uh, its normal laws. And during that period, uh, normal rules, in other words, the, the, the governance of Scotland through Holyrood by its elected officials would be suspended. And while that's happening, uh, David Mundell and his massive new office with its 3,000 staff would step in to run Scotland for us uh, in a way which is obviously never going to benefit us in terms of our, our uh, ambitions to become independent of, of the British state.
So I think it's worth remembering that although we are different from Catalonia and we have a different uh, constitution, and Scotland has a written constitution in the form of two documents, one being the original Declaration of Our Broth, which outlines the sovereignty of the people, and secondly, the, the, the claim of right, which Scotland had passed at Westminster recently without any obstruction by the Tories whatsoever. So Scotland has a very different constitutional set of rules from the Catalonians. But don't let that fool you. I'm pretty certain that the Tories would be happy to use their Henry VIII powers if they're given half a chance in order to avoid a disorderly Brexit, including the exit of Scotland from the UK at the same time. Moving on to the second piece of news today, I said that Queen Elizabeth was sailing to the United States to go on trial. And of course, I mean the aircraft carrier, the Queen Elizabeth, which has been doing some basic sea trials recently, prior to being commissioned. Now, bits of news that have leaked out over the last few weeks have suggested that the new uh, F-35 Raptor aircraft, which were ordered by the Ministry of Defence, to be used on the flight decks of the new Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier have not yet been tested either taking off or landing from the deck of this ship. And I would be, it would be a reasonable thing to guess that they're sailing to America because these jets uh, are over there. They have ordered some for the RAF, but as far as I know, the ones adapted specifically for use on the aircraft carrier have not been delivered yet. Therefore, it makes sense for the Queen Elizabeth to be in the United States waters uh, with perhaps American and British military aviators uh, taking off and landing from our flight decks. But that wasn't the main thrust of the story. The main thrust of the story was that British military commanders, particularly the, the naval commanders, were issuing all kinds of worrying statements about uh, how frightened they were of Russian intervention while this relatively unarmed ship was sailing across the North Atlantic to America. I, mean, I don't quite know what they were expecting. Were they expecting the Russians to sink this ship and, uh, and declare war on, on the UK? I mean, it doesn't make any sense at all, but apparently they were terrified that something bad would happen to Queen Elizabeth on its way across the North Atlantic. And then they made assurances saying that the ship would be heavily guarded and escorted by other British naval ships. So I can't really see quite what it was they were worrying about. At one moment we were desperately scared of the Russians intercepting this unarmed aircraft carrier with no planes, and the next moment it's heavily armed escort would easily take care of it. The noises coming out of the Ministry of Defence in recent years have constantly been building up this clamour of Russia-phobia, that the Russians are up to something and it's not good and we're all to be terrified of them. The Americans have been winding the rhetoric up even more uh, in recent months. And the British government has stated categorically, very clearly, that it is the lapdog of the US when it comes to any kind of military action. So I think we're seeing an awful lot of sabre-rattling and very little actual threat. Um, some of the threats that have been mentioned by the British state recently, one in particular where two Russian T-24 strategic bombers were alleged to have been turned back by two British interceptors, strikes me as being bizarre because there was absolutely no evidence of this. No photographic evidence, no radar evidence, nothing to back up the claims that these bombers were doing anything other than just flying about. Russian bombers fly over the ocean just as often as British jets do, uh, and Russian submarines quite frequently sail around the North Atlantic under the water in just the same way that everybody else's submarines sail around in the North Atlantic. Nobody is saying that the British fleet is threatening the Russian fleet, or that the Americans are threatening the Russian fleet, which is actually more to the point. You'll not have heard the Russians panicking and saying the British fleet is uh, somehow shadowing them and they're expecting uh, Russian submarines to come under fire at any moment. This is all coming from the West at the moment. The Russians are bad, Russia bad, Russia bad. It's almost, it's almost the same tar brush that's used to, to deal with the SNP. The SNP is bad, bad, bad. Everything that happens that bad is the SNP. Everything that's bad militarily is the Russians' fault. People have said recently online, and I think this is probably, probably holds for most of us, that we're worried that America and 
and uh, the UK are now cooking up some new war to have with somebody. And the fact that they're demonising the Russians so much, and the fact that the Americans have been pumping more troops onto the eastern borders of Europe, means that they're ratcheting up the pressure and the rhetoric and the sabre-rattling with Russia. If anybody should feel threatened, actually, it's the Russians, by the massive military build-up by the American forces in Europe. Nothing to do with us threatening, uh, them threatening Britain. They're not threatening Britain. The Russians are just doing what they always do, which is they fly their bombers out, test the edges of our defences and fly home again. And we would do the same thing with them. I'm sure our long-range bombers do the same things, probing the enemy's defences. This is a normal practice of most people's defensive systems. Anyway, enough rabbiting on. It seems to me that the reason Queen Elizabeth has gone to America is because the F-35 planes have not come to the UK. Therefore, the only way of getting any planes to fly off the flight deck of this plane, of this aircraft carrier, is to actually take the ship over to the planes. Which makes you wonder what is so bad about the planes that they can't fly across the Atlantic to come to the ship. I think we can only uh, infer that might be uh, there's unreliability problems with these fighters, or maybe they're not actually sure they will be able to land on the moving flight deck of an aircraft carrier. We'll see. I guess the military of defence will eventually produce some nice pictures with Union flags waving and American fighters touching down and taking off of this British uh, empty aircraft carrier, the one which we haven't got any planes for and isn't armed with anything and is a sitting target for Russian submarines. Either way, uh, they're, they're obviously spoiling for some kind of military action and I would be willing to bet you that as times get closer and closer to Brexit, the chances of some kind of military escalation involving shooting are going to increase rapidly. What else, what other way is there to deflect public opinion away from the disaster looming for the UK and the disaster looming for the American uh, economy, which is so far in debt at the moment that it can never repay its debts now, and yet it still carries on borrowing money, and yet the UK still carries on borrowing money and building aircraft carriers that cannot be paid for either, probably. I think we are worryingly close to some kind of skirmish with the Russians. I hope that it is only a skirmish and that it's another set of, uh, another load of sabre rattling and who can piss the highest. But the point is that this has been used as a method of escaping from difficult political situations for years and when economics go bad, when there are depressions and recessions, the first thing that the, the military machine does is start some new conflict somewhere which makes more money for the military, cuts down the number of human beings in various other countries by killing them all uh, and they make millions and millions of pounds or dollars out of selling lots and lots of extremely expensive military hardware which is then fire the people who don't have defences against it, uh, obliterating them and, and all the money that was spent on the weaponry. So I hope I'm wrong, but uh, the news about uh, of the military sabre-rattling is worrying. But on the other hand, news of uh, our impending referendum is only good, it can only be good news. I just hope I'm wrong that there isn't any military conflict in the offing that uh, America and Britain are just doing their usual, trying to justify arming themselves to the teeth and spending billions of pounds that they haven't got on weapons that they're not going to fire, an enemy that's not actually a threat to them. But either way, um, it would be nice if Scotland was out of this crossfire, if we didn't have Trident, if we didn't have the British uh, military presence in Faz Lane with all of its submarines, its nuclear reactors and its hundreds of nuclear uh, warheads stored in the hillside down there, it would be lovely to get rid of that, that target once and for all. And actually for Scotland to be a neutral country, a peaceful country which gets on with its neighbours, imports and exports to Russia. Russia, remember, is part of Europe. You'll notice that Russia was uh, involved in the European Athletics Championships recently and it was Russian athletes who won the most medals. Europe accepts Russia as a European country. I can't, I can't understand why the Americans can't see Europe and Russia together on the one continent as one, as one big continent. Russia is just another country. 
Putin is by no means a nice guy. I'm sure he's a political leader who is quite ruthless, but he's not stupid either, and he's not going to start a war which would cost him billions of dollars when he wants to make money through trading into Europe, not invade it. And that's the problem. The Americans don't like the Russians. They don't like the Russians trading with Europe. They don't like the Russians selling their oil in anything other than dollars. They don't like the Russians doing deals with China. They don't like them doing deals with Iran. The Americans just basically don't like the Russians at all, or anybody else for that matter. All business has to go to America, and that's basically what everything is about these days. Britain is a spent force. It's not making any money. It's riding the coattails of the Americans all the time. Scotland needs to get off those coattails, and we need to get rid of the, the nuclear weapons, which don't belong here anyway. They belong to the Americans. We should send them back. Anyway, I have to go. I'm sorry uh, this broadcast this afternoon is so late, but it's been a busy day. And uh, I've just come through a set of, of traffic lights in Knightswood, which was stuck on red for the last 10 minutes. So somebody at Siemens need to get your ass down to Knightswood and fix those lights. Anyway, I'll see you all next week. Have a good weekend. Uh, as usual, you know where to uh, contact me if you've got anything you want included in the show. Bye for now.